Okay, you've got Prot on your computer, and now we want to configure the spectrogram. So we have a few sounds in the object list. I'm going to click View and Edit to view this sound. Just have a few stop sounds here, ba, da, and ga. You can see the spectrogram has its default settings, and the way we can set those up is by going to Spectrum, Spectrogram Settings. The default settings we view from 0 to 5,000 hertz. So if we change that, um, we can view much higher, right? We can go up to 10,000 hertz if we wanted to. I can apply those settings, and now everything we just saw is smushed down here. You can see a lot of high-frequency energy. That's not customary, so we can go back to the standard. Sometimes I even set it a little bit lower. I might go down to 4,000 hertz. The window length determines how much time uh, goes into every pixel of the spectrogram. It's a bit of a simplified explanation, but you can think of it as um, being a long window and a short window. So 5 milliseconds is pretty short. We can go even shorter than that by making it like 2 milliseconds, and now we can see that the timing information is really precise, but the frequency information is really spread uh, and is no longer helpful. So going back to the standards here with 5 milliseconds, this is, you know, maybe a little bit short for what I want. We can make it really long by make, making it 40 milliseconds, and now we can start to even see some of those individuated harmonics. By zooming in here, we can see some of those horizontal lines. We can make it a really long window, in this case 80 milliseconds. Now we can see those lines pretty clearly, but you can also see that the timing information is pretty blurred. So what I like to do is typically have something around 12 milliseconds, which gives me some good timing information, some good frequency information, um, and it's a pretty good compromise. The last setting here is the dynamic range. This determines um, how much on the top end of the dynamic range is visible. What I'm going to do is demonstrate that with a different sound. We have a whole sentence here, and in the default settings, or the settings I just set up, we can see a little bit of what looks like background noise over here. So the speech is over, but we still get a bit of that gray sort of noise in the background, and that's pretty soft compared to the speech, so I'm not really interested in that. So on the spectrogram settings, this dynamic range says, only show me the top 70 decibels of the signal. So if I make that smaller, let's say 45 decibels, now all that soft energy in the speech is just completely whitened out on the spectrum, or on the spectrogram here. So um, you might not want to go quite this dramatic, um, maybe something in the middle. Sometimes I choose 55 because I want to see a lot of the detail in the spectrogram, but without some of that background noise. So if you've recorded a sound that has some background noise, you'll probably want to set this to be a smaller number than usual so that it doesn't interfere with your visibility of the actual speech features. The thing we want to do is actually look at the extra, I don't know, ornaments that you can view on the spectrogram. So right now it's a pretty plain view, but we can turn on things like formants, right? And now these red dots will show you um, you know, the formant tracking, so we can toggle those on and off. We can also show the pitch contour, right? So if I show the pitch here, you can see that. So there are a few things we want to know um, about what we're viewing here. So as I turn the formants on, right, um, what I'm going to do is zoom into this sound right here in the middle. This is just the syllable da. So if I click on this one dot right here, okay, this number off to the left shows me the frequency of where I clicked on the spectrogram. So as I click higher over here, that number goes up. If I click higher on the spectrogram, it goes up, and it can go as high as this number in black over here. So I can go, I can click anywhere between 0 and 5,000 in this case. So the n red number on the left corresponds to the actual frequency that's visible. The pitch contour, on the other hand, has a different axis altogether that's over here on the right. So I'm going to turn the formants off just to declutter the screen for a moment. So right here, as I've clicked on this point, it doesn't really matter um, whether I click high or low at this point. The estimate of the pitch is the estimate of the fundamental frequency at the time that I clicked. So unlike the frequency on the left, the, the pitch or the fundamental frequency on the right really has not anything to do with the height of where I click, but only has to do with the horizontal position of where I click. So over here we can see that the pitch is a little bit lower, and it shows up as 81, whereas at this time point it's a little higher, it shows up as 108. Okay, And my pitch you know, floor and ceiling are set to 60 and 250 hertz. So you can, you can play with that a little bit depending on um, 
what talker it is you, you're listening to. So if I set this at the standard between 75 and 500, you can see that that whole contour is smushed way down at the bottom because as you can see, like the, the upper end of the pitch contour is not that much higher than 100. So all this other, other space is pretty wasted up there. So instead for this talker, um, I'm gonna set this a lot lower. In fact, I'm just gonna set it to 150 and start at 70. And now I can see some of the dynamics in that contour because um, you know it's really uh, all the visible space is really just the range that I'm interested in. So going back to the format tracking again, um, there are a lot of details in this format tracking uh, that we'll have a separate video on. Um, but one of the things you want to think about uh, is whether your formant settings um, actually support a good formant analysis of the talker that you're analyzing. And so the next video will just be about um, fiddling with the formant settings to make sure that they're appropriate.